Hi, this is Kent, and welcome to another session of Deepening Your Spiritual Toolbox. Today we're going to be exploring how the ordinary moments of life can become extraordinary, can become moments of sacred encounter. And I've been thinking a lot about this book that I've read recently entitled Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Robin is an indigenous person living in the upstate area of New York. She is part of the Iroquois community. And she's also a PhD biologist. And in this book, she invites us to move from simply a scientific approach to nature where we name and categorize what we see to entering into a deep and meaningful relationship with all that is. And she talks about how in the Iroquois people, sweetgrass, which is native to that area, is a sacred, a medicine plant. And she offers this in her book. She says, hold out your hands and let me lay upon them a sheaf of freshly picked sweetgrass, loose and flowing like newly washed hair. Golden green and glossy above, the stems are banded with purple and white where they meet the ground. Hold the bundle up to your nose. Find the fragrance of honeyed vanilla over the scent of river water and black earth and you understand its scientific name, Heracloi adorata, meaning the fragrant holy grass. She says in our Iroquois language, it is wingash, the sweet smelling hair of Mother Earth. Breathe it in and you start to remember things that you didn't know you'd forgotten. You start to remember things that you didn't know that you had forgotten. In her book, Braiding Sweetgrass, the author invites us to enter into our times in the natural world with intention and with openness. By intention, she means entering into the natural world, recognizing that we are but a part of all that is. We are not observers. We are not there to name and quantify and collect, but we are invited to enter into the natural world and be a part of it. The author reminds us that oftentimes we live in a human-centric world, as if all that is, this natural world, is at our disposal for our, our use. But she says when we look at the world through the eyes of the indigenous ones, we see that all of these beings have a sense of personhood, it's not just people who have personhood, she writes, but everything that is has worth, has value, has an identity, has a name, has a reason for being where we are. So when I come to a place like this, when I look out at this wetlands, I am more than an observer enjoying a beautiful sight. I see myself connected to all that is. And when I approach the world with that mindset, this ordinary moment of standing on this snowy, beautiful day, as special as it is, becomes even more. I recognize that I am standing on holy ground. I am in a sacred place, part of a community. So when I enter onto my hikes, I ask permission to enter into the homes of those that I am with. I ask permission of the chipmunk, who at this very moment, in this very area, is burrowed a few feet down into the ground and curled into a little bowl, ball and in a hibernating state, maintaining its energy for when it becomes warmer, but occasionally wakes up and grabs berries and nuts that that chipmunk has collected in the summer to boost its energy, and then it goes back to sleep. It reminds me of sitting on a couch in the winter, right? Having, watching TV, having those nuts and berries, 
and uh, in, enjoying where I am. I'm not all that different than a chipmunk and neither are you and we're no better than all that is. The Iroquois say that the trees, they call the trees the standing people. The trees have an identity. They are to be treated with respect. And if they are to be harvested, they are to be harvested with respect. The Iroquois say that when they make a decision, particularly a decision about the earth, about all that is, they do so thinking of those seven generations removed. How will their decisions today affect those not yet born? They have that mindset because they live their lives with intention. They recognize that they are responsible not just for themselves, but for the natural world upon which we all depend. That we can't mess our nest. And we need to think not only of our own well-being today, but for the well-being of others seven generations removed. If we believe that to be true, then how we deal with climate change today and the policies that we put in place today and the practices that we have individually and collectively as nations today has a profound and lasting impact on those not yet born. And if we believe in the sanctity of life, of all of life, not just human life, if everything has worth, then we have a responsibility to take care of what is today, but also thinking of seven generations removed. In the Hebrew scriptures, there's the story of Moses. And Moses was w walking along and out of the corner of his eye, he saw a burning bush. And that burning bush was not consumed. And from that burning bush, he heard the voice of God saying, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. When we live our lives with intention, when we go out for a walk in the woods or at the beach or in our garden or backyard or around our neighborhood or at a local park, and when we live our lives and we look at the world with that type of intention, honoring our place in the midst of it all, then everything changes. This becomes more than just a pretty place. It becomes a holy place, a sacred place where I am blessed to be part of it all. I am transformed by this mindset. And so that's the invitation I offer to you as well, to live your life with intention. Whatever you are doing to give thanks for where you are and what you have, it, it invites us to an attitude of gratitude that transforms us and transports us and blesses us. It makes the ordinary moments of life extraordinary. We can take that mindset, for example, into the kitchen when we're preparing a meal. We look around our, our kitchen and we give thanks for what we have, for the food in our refrigerator, for the opportunity to slice those carrots and to put it into the stew and to share that for the well-being of ourselves and perhaps others. When we live with intention, everything changes. When we give thanks for where we are and give thanks for what we have, and when we see ourselves connected to other human beings, responsible for the well-being of others, but also responsible to respect and protect that which we call home. Today, I saw a Facebook posting by my friend Tina Barrett, who lives with her husband in Missoula, Montana. And Tina was posting some wonderful photos of winter camping with her husband outside of Missoula. And I saw these huge smiles on Tina's face and on her husband's face. And I thought of a phrase my grandmother used to say when I was really happy as a boy. She would say, Kent, you are living large. You are living large. I shared that phrase when I replied to Tina's photos this morning of her in Missoula, Montana. Tina, you and your husband are living large. 
Today when I was walking from my car to film this in the wetlands, a young woman was passing me with her two dogs. And I said, hello, and she said, hello. She said, it's just us. She said, how lucky we are. I said, yeah, we are living large. And she yelled back, we are brilliant. We are brilliant. We are living large. When we recognize that we belong to all that is, that the world is so much more complex than we could possibly imagine. And yet, paradoxically, as we become more awed by the complexity of the world, we may feel smaller. But in feeling smaller, we find that we have our place, our rightful place, in the midst of it all. It's been said that we remember who we are as we remember the one and the ones to whom we belong. We have a place. You and I have a name. And we have a home. And we are responsible for one another as human beings. And we are resp responsible for the well-being of the standing trees, for the beavers in their lodge just over my shoulder, for the turtles hibernating in the mud, and for that chipmunk that is sleeping through the winter until the summer comes. So I wish you well, I wish you good health, and I wish you hope, and I wish you that you can continue to live your life with intention and with an open mind, spirit, and imagination for all the gifts that are all around us, just waiting to be received. This is the good news. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.